Today, we talk about you and how you go from where you're at now to a million dollar net worth in real estate. We'll talk about how you go from where you are now to 200 plus thousand dollars a year and true real cash flow. Today, we map out your financial future. We have tons of great content for you and I'm excited to share it with you. So let's get started. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year real estate investor as well as stock and option trader. You're going to get a ton of extremely valuable information in today's video. I'm excited to show you how real estate can literally take you from being broke or average, struggling paycheck to paycheck to financially secure. I've had the unique opportunity of building two real estate fortunes starting with nothing each time. I will show you how you can do it today. Subscribe now and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on my future weekly videos. And stay tuned until the end of this video because I'm going to share with you a step-by-step -step guide of what exactly you need to do to start building your million dollar net worth today. I'm going to approach this video from the perspective of if I had to start over for the third time, how would I go about doing that? How would I reach that million dollar net worth and $200,000 plus year cash flow as soon as possible? This is exactly how I would do it. Number one, you're going to have to hustle. If you're watching this video, that's probably something you're prepared to do anyways. So what are you going to have to hustle doing? You've got to get out there and look at some deals. The kind of deals you're looking for are probably the ones that won't require much cash out of your pocket either because you don't have much cash or because you need to use the cash you do have to spread around to as many deals as possible. If you'd like to learn more about how to put deals together with very little or no money, check out the video in the link above and in the description below after you finish this video. When I started from scratch my first time, as well as my second time, I started with borrowed money and hard money lenders. Some of it was money that I borrowed from my family. Some of it was money that I borrowed on credit cards that had low interest rates for a year, a year and a half. Whatever it takes to get up some money, do that. Because the more cash you have access to, the easier this will be. You can start with nothing, but you'll have to hustle a bit harder. We're going to break your game plan down into three phases. Phase one, I call it getting off the ground. Your goal here is to get to the point where you have $100,000 in cash. Now that may sound like a huge number for you, but if you do this right, it really is not that big of a number. After you do this, when you look back on this portion of your life, it just might be the most rewarding part of your financial life because the barriers that you will be knocking down. You're going to experience massive learning in this portion of your game plan. This will be the most difficult part of your million dollar real estate investing game plan. Getting the first $100,000 is always the most difficult. Well, how do you do it? Get out there and meet a lot of people in real estate. Let it be known that you are looking for deals and tell them what kind of deals you're looking for, how much cash you have, that you're a serious buyer, that you're hungry, and that you are ready to buy a deal if they bring it to you and it matches the terms that you're looking for. Also, you have to get out there and start trying to find sellers you can talk to directly. If you don't have much cash, this is going to be your best option starting out. At this point in your career, in my opinion, you can't afford to make a mistake to do a bad deal. So you have to make sure that the deal you buy is going to make you money, no questions asked, no skinny deals. If you start out with a bad deal, you can still make it, but it'll make it even more difficult on you than it needs to be if you just make sure that your first deal has some meat left on that bone. Let me tell you how you might be able to do this. You don't know what kind of deals are going to come your way. You have to take what comes your way as long as the numbers make sense. This is how it happened for me the two times I had to start from scratch to kind of give you an idea of how it might go for you. I'll never forget my first three deals the very first time I started out. My very first purchase was a five unit apartment building that was an old building, but it didn't need much work. I got 70% financing from the bank. The seller took back a 20% financing mortgage and I was able to come up with 10% down off a home equity line on my house that I had built myself over the previous year. My second deal was a single family house that I got owner financing on and used a credit card for the $3,500 down payment. 
My third deal was a piece of property with two duplexes on it and a house right in the middle that I got seller financing on by putting some cash down. I believe it was about $20,000 that I got off my home equity line and several other low interest credit cards. Now none of these deals were necessarily spectacular, but they were cash flowing deals. If I knew then what I know now, I would have tried to raise some private money from the beginning because I quickly ran out of money on my home equity line and on the credit cards that I had. I've made several other videos discussing private money as well as other ways to get some cash up. If you'd like to check them out, the link is above and in the description below. When I started over for the second time, I tackled the most difficult deal of my career. It was a 166 lot mobile home park that had been in bankruptcy and foreclosure for three years. It was so bad the seller gave me 100% seller financing with interest only payments for a year because of the shape it was in. I had to come up with the money to fix the mobile homes up, which I did by means of raising private money. Over 80 of the mobile homes had been vandalized. The wiring, the plumbing had all been stolen out of them, but the numbers didn't lie. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that once this deal was turned around, it would generate massive cash flow. And if I decided to sell it, it would give me a nice big wad of cash to take with me and to propel me into the next level. And that's exactly what we did. We ended up buying another mobile home park around the corner, which brought our total to 250 pads. And all we were modeled over a hundred mobile homes over a two year period using all hard money and private money lenders. We were able to turn the mobile home parks around and use the cash to move on to phase two. At the end of phase one, you should have between a hundred and three hundred thousand dollars in cash. That may or may not be your net worth, but you need that much cash to go to the next level. In the comments below, let me know what your first real estate deal was. Was it a house, apartment, mobile home? Or if you haven't done your first deal yet, in the comments below, tell me by what date you will have your first deal done. What is your goal? It's at this point that you need to begin to think about your end game. How do you want your real estate portfolio to look? Do you want a bunch of property with a good bit of debt that you will be paying down, but you still get cash flow of that 200,000 plus a year? Or do you want to work towards having fewer units to oversee and not to worry about, but they're paid off? So your cash flow is still about the same. You don't have as much principal reduction. The first time I built my real estate company, I had over 150 units of rental property between houses and apartments. When I rebuilt the second time, I knew that I just did not want to work as much as I was having to work to maintain those 150 units. So my goal was to get up enough cash to have the majority of my properties paid for. As a result, now I have a fraction of those 150 units or even a fraction of the 250 units that I had in the mobile home parks. But my cash flow is still about the same because I have a lot of my properties paid for or the debt is really low. As such, my cash flow is actually better now with a fraction of the number of units because my debt is so much lower. I don't have a lot of growth because I'm not paying down many mortgages, but I also don't have the headaches of owning a bunch of units. That's a personal decision that you have to answer for yourself. Now you're off to phase two. Phase two, I call it starting to soar. The hardest part of this whole process will be phase one, getting off the ground. It takes a lot of friction and energy for airplane to get off the ground. But once it's off the ground, just like you, it starts to soar. Phase two consists of doing more deals and hopefully more profitable deals. Your goal is to get up enough cash to do a big deal that will get you to the point where you have 250 to $500,000 in cash or get you to the point you can take the next step to reach your final goal in phase three. Phase three is the final phase in this initial goal of a $1 million net worth and a $200,000 plus year cash flow. If you're doing single family houses in phase two, you're just doing a handful or two of deals. If you manage to make between 20 to $50,000 per deal, you probably need about 10 deals. The catch is that you can't spend this money. You have to keep doing your other job that you've been doing before you started real estate and don't touch this money. Don't buy a car. Don't buy a new house. Don't go on luxury vacations. All that will come soon after you reach phase three. I know it might be hard to imagine you ever getting to the point where you have 200 or even up to half a million dollars cash at your disposal, but if you take this one day at a time, one week at a time, and one year at a time, it can happen. The first time I did this, I did it on hopes and a dream. I hoped it would work out and I dreamed of how it would feel when it did work out. That may be how you feel about this right now. But the second time I did it, it was not on a hope and a dream. I knew that it would happen. It was just a matter of how long it would take. 
I knew I could do it because I've done it before. I fixed the mistakes, the flaws in my real estate investing game plan strategy that had put me in a bind the first time so it would never happen again. At this point in your game plan, you're now entering phase three. Phase three, I call it off and flying. If you like what you're hearing, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. That way you won't miss out on our next video that we're going to release next week. And stay here until the end of this video because I will tell you where you can find the step-by-step -step guide so you can begin your personal journey and executing this investment game plan that we're talking about right now that will change your life forever financially. Phase three will probably be your favorite phase. I know it is mine. This is when all your hard work comes together. It's when you're able to buy that big deal or the last few houses that get you to the point where you're making 200 plus thousand a year cash flow and your net worth is over a million dollars. It's at this point that you have to make a decision. Are you happy where you're at? Do you want to take a break and then give it another push to maybe get to $400,000 a year cash flow and a $2 million net worth? Or do you want to keep right on going and not even take a break, just keep right on going for that goal? That'll be the biggest and funnest decision of this whole process. You see, at this point in the game, you've learned how to beat the game. You're now able to consistently pull money out over and above the 200,000 plus a year cash flow out of real estate. And now it becomes more like a game than it is like work. Well, what might this look like? It could be a combination of houses, duplexes, quadplexes, individual mobile homes, apartments, or maybe even mobile home parks. Personally, I have a combination of houses, some nicer, a little more expensive houses, others are middle-class houses. I also have a combination of mobile homes and smaller mobile home parks. Once I reached phase three, I decided that I didn't really want to be tied down by watching over big projects. So I sold the larger mobile home park that I owned at that point. What would you decide to do? At this point in your career, in your life, it's all about what's important to you because your finances, they're taken care of. In the beginning of this video, I promised to give you a step-by-step -step guide of exactly what you need to do to start building your million dollar net worth and 200,000 plus a year cash flow portfolio. That guide is found in the link above. By the time you finish watching it, you'll know exactly what you need to do today to start your journey. Check out the video. It could completely change your life. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.